Hi folks, welcome back to the Tactic Zone with me, John Greekin, for Record Online Sport. Today we're looking back at a pretty remarkable game, Rangers' first win of the season over Celtic at their sixth attempt. Now yes, we all have to be cautious about reading too much in one result. We need Professor John Curtis here, telling fans of both clubs not to get fooled by one game, however impressive it looks on the swingometer. Celtic were short of key players in important positions, especially fullback, which meant they couldn't play their usual game. But Rangers harried them, hassled them, forced them into mistakes, and arrived with a plan that worked to a T. So, a bit like that fella played by Benedict Cumberbund in the imitation game, has Michael Beale cracked the Ange ball code? No, let's not go nuts. But Beale's intent from the off was obvious. He'd identified key target zones and looked to overload bodies in those areas. Look at the room Jack, Cantwell and Yilmaz have to exploit here. The left back actually puts in a really good cross that only wants a bit of better movement by one of the front three. It would be picky to single out Cantwell for not making a centre forward run though. I mean, after all, he was deployed as a sort of agent of chaos by Beale, popping up in a false nine role at number 10 on the wing, all while doing a disciplined defensive job. The early opener for Cantwell owed a lot to Celtic simply being pushed onto the back foot. Look here and you'll see Lundstrom has all that red zone room to exploit as he lets rip with a powerful shot. And O'Reilly, who everyone blames for losing Cantwell, he has his attention drawn towards Lundstrom, which means he leaves the Rangers player free to bury the rebound. It's never just as simple as a guy switching off. You can see his attention's been diverted by the main danger, which is the shot. There was plenty of space for Rangers to exploit in that first phase of the game. You know, if Matondo had passed instead of shooting here, we're not saying Lundstrom was running beyond any of the Celtic defenders, but he could have built a more patient attack. Celtic had their moments, of course. I mean, they're the newly crowned champions still chasing a treble. In other words, they're a decent side. You wonder, might the game have panned out differently if O hadn't hit the post from this counter-attack led by Abada? It's a fair question. O'Reilly also got in between the Rangers' lines once or twice. He even breached the defence here, only a cross when he might have shot. And O'Reilly then mugged Jack to set up a chance for himself too. Now, Ralston, if not quite Alistair Johnson when it comes to touch and finesse, did find some space to put in a couple of telling crosses. Look at the room in behind here. You know, there were, there were options there for Celtic. But Rangers, who went 2-0 up from Suter's set-piece header, um, deserved real credit for what they did without the ball. I know, I know, it's nerdy, but this is what we really like about analysis, right? Look at this here. We can't well tight on McGregor and other light blue jerseys blocking out the passing lanes. They're effectively forcing Starfelt to play a pass into the feet of Ralston, who's facing his own goal. That's a smart move by any opposing team. And here we see Hatate receiving the ball as he's been forced back into a crowd of Rangers players. Again, they've set up that trap and then snapped it shut. This gave them a solid base from which to keep punching away at the Celtic lines. Sakala nearly made it 3-0 here. You can see Celtic are a bit stretched and ragged at the back. And you know what we say about unforced errors, right? In football, they are as rare as a welcome intervention by VAR. Rangers just bounced Celtic into the mistake that led to the third. Hatati, who has been hounded all afternoon, was maybe an ounce or two heavy with his pass here. And Cantwell then pounces on McGregor. And from there, sure, McGregor and Starfelt make a right mess of things, but credit Cantwell for the effort, and Sakala for finishing it off. So, what do we read into this game then, at the dog end of a season when the title has long since been won and lost? Well, Ange Postacoglu didn't have his A-team available. But Beal, he loves it when a plan comes together. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you haven't, go on Twitter and find me at Johnny the Greek and tell me exactly where I've got it all wrong. And keep checking out Record Online Sport for all your top football coverage.